All right, guys, it's that time of the month again. Well, not my time of the month. My time of the month is all month. That's why I'm grumpy all the time, but I digress. Today is time of our time of the month for talking about your jankiest DIY homebrew, whatever the crap it is you guys sent me setups. I don't know why I do this to myself. NZXT's build is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer, and right now they're proud to announce expansion and availability to Australia, the Netherlands, France, and Italy. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator and see exactly how your favorite games will perform. Want to build your own PC but still have the NZXT peace of mind warranty? Then the new BLD Build It Yourself kit has what you want. Buy it and build it yourself and NZXT has you covered. To get started configuring or building your next gaming PC, visit the build link in the description below. So before we go ahead and get into uh, your guys' jankiest DIY homebrewed setups and stuff, I'm gonna show you how you can add to your own jankiness of your setup, and that being with the J's Two Cents gaming mouse mat. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this underneath uh, my computer here, just like you guys should, and you guys can pick up your very own. We still have a few left from our initial run of gaming mats. They're pretty big. They're 35 inches by 17 inches. I don't know what that is in the other part of the world. Y'all can convert it yourself, because I use janky units here. Anyway. Moving on, let's go ahead and start it off with Ben, Burninator 386. Truck door! Oh God, voice crack. Truck door! Puberty hit again. I'm currently working on building a completely custom wooden case out of walnut, but until it's ready, this janky MDF, which is multi-density multi fiber board, uh, or medium density fiber board. Multi-dimensional fiber board. Well, there is multiple densities. There's medium density, it's high density, is uh, Prototype is what I have my parts mounted. I actually kind of like this. It's, it's not really all that jank if you think about it, but I like the fact that he's using this to get all his measurements and stuff. I want to know what these little these little plastic tabs are that he's using to mount the fans, because I have a feeling those would come in handy. So he's got Be Quiet fans, he's got a 3070 Ti in there, he's got an EVGA, is that an 850 G2? Looks like it. Oh, I, I just now realized his Velcro down red LED, green LED, and like random clicker buttons. Are they labeled reset and restart and power? Are you going to know which one's which? Anyway, this is kind of neat though. I like the, the fact that he's framing it up with MDF. That way he kind of has a template already so he's not wasting a walnut when he starts cutting the, the more expensive, harder to get wood. I like it. This one falls under more of a DIY rather than a jank, but uh, it was actually the Burninator 386. You know, Compi 386. It's a spectacle in graphics and sound. <laughs> All right, this next one comes to us from uh, AK90. 90? 90, AK90. Uh, he says he used an old fountain pump and an old evaporative core to water cool a CPU once. Can't remember what CPU it was, sadly. I liked this one because this truly, truly goes back to when water cooling, look, all you whippersnappers today just don't understand the struggle of trying to water cool or liquid cool something in the past before all this fan dangled off the shelf crap existed. Now you guys have choice. Before it was like, what could we take apart and salvage? It's literally like watching an episode of like Mythbusters or Savage Builds or something where they're literally just like, what can we just completely mangle and rip apart to make work in a way? It's like kit bashing together a water cooling setup. So he used an evaporative core right here. Typically what we use in the past would be some sort of a heater core from a car because they're smaller. People all the time are like, use a radiator from a car. I mean, it's, it's huge. I mean, that's way bigger than you need it to be. But a heater core from a car, a transmission cooler, an oil cooler or something like that usually much smaller, works perfectly. Um, he's using uh, what he said was a, a, va a fountain pump, and that's typically what we'd use. This looks like a, a non-submersible, but pond pumps, uh, aquarium pump, anything that moved fluid would work pretty well. This is his outgoing to his CPU. I wish he had said what he was using for a CPU block. It looks like a Zalman. Yeah, it's an, a Zalman block. So he used an off-the-shelf block. Where it really started to get hard, when the, the true jank came into play was trying to find something to flow fluid through that could touch the CPU to absorb the heat and carry it away. That stuff, again, wasn't really mainstream back then. So AK90 took me down uh, memory lane here with this one, which is why I thought it was perfect. And there's just the fact that it's clearly in a shop. Like this is clearly a workshop of some sort, just made it feel so much more industrial. King David says, okay, this is a super old picture of 2009. My laptop shell was badly damaged and I couldn't afford to replace it. So he busted out the old hot and ready. Like I say every single time, that's why also what I call my Saturday nights. <laughs> so it gets there five minutes less or less. Well, you get to choose cheese, pepperoni, or sausage. Cheese is if I haven't showered after the gym. Dude! Sausage no. is what- <laughs> No, hold on, stop. Stop right there. <laughs> 
Or just what I call myself, the ultimate supreme. Ooh, the three meat tree. Okay, back to the bill. Where's the other two come from? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've said around here a million times I want to do a cardboard box build. I've never gotten around to it. But I just love how he has the antennas taped up high. Right? He's got the ribbon cable and everything there for his monitor. Um, he's just he's just using like backstrap material from like Home Depot to make a hinge for the box. Um, yeah, he's got his, his drive down there and he's got his... Wait, why does he even have a fan right there? The mouse is in the box. That's, that's what's funny. I mean, the little My Little Pony toy right here in the corner. That's awesome. Probably time to sweep the floor. Honestly, King David. Um, Granted, this was 12, 13 years ago. I hope it's swept by now. But anyway, yeah, I mean, you, ha you it's the obligatory cardboard box build. If you don't show it, then you ain't truly going down the path of jank. Moving on, this is uh, longest name on YouTube history. 30 years of globe believing Huey Lewis in the news. He says, for your consideration, Project Jenkinstein. Two Dell PSUs, one to power the MOBO and one to power the drives. Jeez, I just realized how like kind of Jank the wiring is going up to the CPU up there and oh, it's just, I guess it's just twisted wire. Okay It looks it looked like exposed for a second. This isn't that jank. Honestly, this is I mean The jankiest thing is the fact that you're using either of these two crappy power supplies Both of them either one of them individually are a risk to your system Let alone running both of them But I can't say it's not something I haven't done in the past because back in the past when we had our the water cooling stuff like I was showing you with AK90 uh, we needed a way to power it up and off the time it was out of the case and so we'd come up with some sort of a power supply or take the, the throwaway one that always came with every single ATX case, came with a cheap like 100 watt power supply, 150 watt power supply or whatever it was and then we would just use that with Molex and we would have to remember to turn that on separately because it wasn't wired in the system so you turn on your system and suddenly it's shutting down you're like oh I forgot to turn on the water pump and turn that on and then the system runs but you have not that many hard drives here, sir. So if your power supply that you have can't power those hard drives, it might be time to actually upgrade that power supply. All right, Josh Bell says, my build is less about how janky it is and more of how janky and scary what it's sitting on. This appears to be a writing desk from 1947. Oh, maybe he's referring to the gamer's Nexus mouse pad. Hey, he's got the same watt meter we do down there. <laughs> what? So it's a glass top wooden writing desk. Phil and I were looking at this photo and I mean, this is, I think this is, Honestly, like a fairly average, like typical type setup. And people will often just put their computer on whatever they can set it on. But we were a little more impressed over here with his nostalgic gaming collection. He's got an N64, he's got an SNES. He's got an NES somewhere. He's got all these NES games right here. We can't find the NES. He's got a Game Boy. But uh, it's obvious now that he's got a lot of retro gaming stuff here. Um, he's also running an X470 Aorus with a Ryzen CPU. So good setup. But I don't find that desk to actually be all that janky. The only thing I find kind of janky is where your power supply is, or your um, power strip is sitting, which is literally where your feet go. And anytime I've done that in the past, I guarantee my big fat toe is gonna hit that reset button or trick the toggle switch itself and shut the whole system down. Not that janky, but probably relatable. And then the chair, my God. I think I've had that exact chair. It's like a $70, maybe a $50 chair from like Office Depot. I have busted the frame on that chair so many times and just gone flying out of it because it just suddenly fully like lays back and then just roll out of it. I Because I think it's what, what happens is the arm breaks right here and then when that breaks, it's just plastic and then the whole thing just goes and I'm a bigger, I'm a bigger gentleman, therefore that tends to happen. Replace your chair though. It literally looks like you've been chewing on it. All right, so this one's a little, this one's not jank at all. This is, we found this to be a pretty impressive DIY. This is a uh, Star Rims, well, he put a system spec, uh, an i5-3570, GTX 1060, six gigabyte, nothing special, 860 Evo, 250 gigabyte Kingston, 240 gigabyte, um, and it's totally mine, he says. But it is a frame chassis built out of PVC pipe that's all painted black. I mean, it looks like a D-frame, but we're calling it the P-frame. I'm not sure what he's using as the motherboard tray back there. Maybe a piece of wood that's painted or something. You see it screwed right into the piping. But it actually looks pretty good. I'm surprised. Like this, it's an example of, you know, not all things that are janky have to look janky. It's initially I thought that this was some sort of a, a like a chassis that you could go buy. And then I realized like, oh, it's just PVC pipe, 90 degrees and T, T fittings and a bunch of screws. Uh, Star rooms, I think it looks good. The hardware itself is nothing really to write home about, but would be really awesome now is if you put like a high-end build in this. 
then you'll get people that are gonna be triggered. All right, unhinged systems just brought me back. Well, it's funny. I would say brought me back to my childhood, but not really, because in 2001, I was an adult. But uh, he says, this is his, his old setup circa 2001. Two gaming PCs, one Windows Server 2000, a PS2, a Logitech wheel for Gran Turismo, and this was the game room, very jank. <clears throat> it's, uh, it just reminds me of, of, like I had a setup similar to this when I was a kid. I had my CRT monitors, although you have two PCs and a, and a server, but I had my, my CRT monitors and I had my chair and I had my Commodore 64 and I had my Nintendo to the left hooked up to a, 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 a TV that I had to use the turn to channel three and then the antenna adapter because literally it was sending an RF antenna into the, or signal into the antenna feed and then it would pop up on the screen. I had my, like I said, my Nintendo system there, my Commodore 64. Um, I had a like really crazy looking boombox thing that was like really, really old at the time. And that was hooked up to my computer for sound because it used the regular audio jack. And this just reminds me of that setup. Although this is like 10 years newer <laughs> than that setup was. But uh, I, again, I, I just love the fact that even in 2001, well, I guess in 2001, flat screens were still not very easily affordable. I mean, I remember the first flat screen I saw once, uh, I can't remember what store it was, but it was $20,000 for a flat, flat screen TV. But what I love is the uh, wooden dining room table chair. I think we've all sat on a wooden dining room table chair at some point for our setup. All right, Mr. Sausage Roll sends us what is now like the natural progression of the cardboard build. So you already saw the hot and ready build, the laptop box, right? He says, I'm still rocking this H510 side panel mod featuring a tape window that I need to remove to access the single bolt that releases this plywood wonder. Got the blueprint if someone's interested. You just need a kitchen knife and the back of someone's wardrobe. So. Wait, he cut it with a kitchen knife? <laughs> <laughs> you, you use what's at your disposal, man. So as if the H510 couldn't have, you know, bad enough airflow as it is, he obviously improved it by adding fans and the tape window. So if we look at the side right here, you can see this is clearly like that plywood backing on like a, like a thin, like eighth inch thick, ply, maybe 16 inch thick uh, plywood backing that would come with like a piece of Ikea furniture or something, but this is like more robust than that. Uh, I like how he has a Be Quiet fan up here on the top right, and then he's got another one. I like his little little flip down kind of a handle thing he's got going there. Um, but yeah, he's got to remove the tape to reach in there to remove the one bolt that's like holding it all together. Why someone would actually go through this level of effort is kind of beyond me. I mean, I get it. The H510 is terrible when it comes to case airflow, and I'm sure it's a lot better now with these two side fans blowing air directly on the components. And you obviously have two Noctua fans in there and a Noctua cooler. Can you respond to this and tell me why you did this? It's gotta just be for the lulls, right? I mean, you don't really have blueprints for this. And if you do have blueprints, I wanna see them. So Justin Bogman, Bog, Bog, Bogman, 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 Justin says, from back when I was just getting into IT, Wait, so he was just in IT? He said he was just getting into IT. So he's just in IT. I'm dead joke the dad right there. Yeah, let's go. All right. Uh, as someone that was in IT, I am just appalled that anyone getting into IT would ever let anything ever look like this. The amount of cables that are sitting here, most of them are not from this computer. They are from whatever else you have going on on your desk. I mean, these are like power cables. These are like monitor cables. You've got some sort of an EQ or something happening right there. <sighs> I get it, I had a Phantom case. No, they are not very easy to mount a radiator in, although some of them, if you remove these two top, uh, I think they're 180 millimeter fans, there was 140 mounts and you could mount it up top. But I just don't know what to say to this. That's like, you go to the guy whose car is falling apart and there's oil leaks everywhere on the ground and smoking and he goes, I'm a mechanic. And you're like, sure, you can work on my car. All right, so Nikki Mogensen, Mogensen says, COVID second wave, software developers still didn't have a sit-stand desk or a dedicated office for that matter. First of all, I think that's a dog butt. I, that looks like a dog butt, not so much a cat butt, maybe a dog butt. I don't know what the hell is all over your chair. I don't know if that's dog poo. I don't know if that's stains, rips. Is that a, like a bearskin rug underneath your desk? Okay, moving on. He clearly has like an Ikea, one of those, uh, it's like the, the 
particle board desks that have the legs that mount to them, not like the hodgepodge, like build your own type stuff that we've done with the hard tables like this. It's like the thin, like hollow wood type tables, which he's using a plastic bin with a shelf on top of it to raise up the height of his monitor and his keyboard and, well, his monitor is sitting on the bin directly. The keyboard and mouse is sitting on the shelf with an RGB mouse pad that's hanging off the side and a plastic footstool for his second monitor. Fun fact, my daughter had that same stool when she was learning how to get in the bathtub. Not entirely sure why we have a uh, plushy reindeer, like Rudolph sitting on here. I do like his uh, PlayStation wheel, like way off to the left and his pedals down there. And then his like super duper tall I, uh, Alex drawers here. No, I mean, if, if there were ever the definition of the word jank, Nikki, you're on your way there. And who is blurred out? Like, and why are you taking a photo while on a Zoom call? All right, Nikki, I've, I've ripped you enough. Um, I asked for jank, you delivered. Okay, I chose this photo simply because of the fact that he's using, like, it's an example of what I was saying when I, when I said, we have to figure out how to make something work as a block. So I didn't even notice, and I didn't even read the comment or the, the caption until like right now. I saw the photo, I was like, okay, this works. Because like, he's got this like homebrew nut and bolt kind of a bracket just sitting diagonal with only two screws holding the block against the, the GPU die. I have no idea what this little block is from. It clearly was not, des not designed for this purpose. It could have been from something industrial. Remember, water cooling has been around for a long time in electronics before PCs. Um, avi avionics equipment was actually water cooled in airplanes and such, and they had special glycols and stuff that wouldn't freeze at high altitude way back in the day because you have to keep the stuff, uh, it gets really hot, the avionics equipment, so they have to keep it cool. And people would actually take stuff out of there with dismantling airplanes and Cessnas and stuff and make them work in PCs. But I just noticed his little stick on uh, heat sinks and stuff, which are like a quarter of the size of the chokes, which is kind of funny. Um, but anyway, he's got another picture here and he says, slap it with an aquarium pump. Like I said, we use aquarium pumps all the time. And a 240, the temp went from 70-ish Celsius to 50. Um, tried crypto mining with it and another old 580. Um, now it has earned itself a proper water block in a fancier reservoir, awesome. But yeah, see, it's, it's a submerged pump because a lot of aquarium pumps are designed to run inside water. And that's what he has right here. He's got a, basically a piece of Tupperware filled with water with a pump sitting in it, circulating water through a bike ski radiator and some uh, Noctua fans and it gets the job done. So this is like a modern version of the hodgepodge we would have to do like back in the day. And I love seeing this kind of stuff because I, I've said a bunch of times, I'm gonna do a video about uh, putting together a system like we did 20, 30 years ago, where it was just like, this is what we had, this is what we did it. The problem is a lot of the stuff we used back then doesn't really exist anymore unless I really go digging through like junkyards and stuff pretty much because of the fact that everything's become so mainstream now, it's hard to find the old school stuff. But I need to do that, I think, at some point. Just for my own my own fun, even though the video would probably perform like crap, I, I think it'd be fun just because it's the way we did it back then. And then this last one here is from Stealthy Mosquito. Uh, clearly, he's a truck driver. He says, I built and ran this when I was driving a tractor trailer. 32 inch TV, it squeezed down on top of the upper bed rails, worked well and made downtime much better. Now, if you guys aren't aware, if you're completely ignorant to truck drivers, um, DO, especially here in the United States, DOT regulations, they can only drive for a certain amount of time per period, and then they have to take downtime. It's, you'll see them usually napping on the side of the road, or they'll be in a truck stop for a few hours, um, eating, resting, doing laundry, all that sort of stuff that's in the required downtime. They can't just drive as long as they want to. Their logs indicate they have to stop at a certain hour if they've been driving for so long. So having a setup in your tractor trailer would be a big deal if you're a gamer of any sort. So you can see he's got his Xbox uh, bungee corded to like this kind of a plywood thing that he has made here, what plywood and two by fours. It's actually fairly well cable managed, which is, which is nice to see. I have no idea how big his tractor trailer is. Clearly it's a sleeper cab. Um, what you're seeing here is that box behind the windows that goes kind of sideways. That's where all this is put. You can see his monitor, which is a 32 inch TV is hanging down. Um, so it's up out of the way. That way he's technically kind of sleeping under it. Hope nothing gives way when you're sleeping. Although he said when he was a truck driver, so maybe he's not anymore. And then you can see, uh, I don't think that he had a gaming tower in here. It looks like it's just Xbox. Yeah, but I mean, people have done this very same thing and sent me videos and pictures of their, their tractor trailer setups. We'll have like an ITX rig or something up there, which is something he could absolutely do on that shelf right there. It just, I just love the fact that it's all wooden and clearly it's held together because those cabs can get kind of bouncy. And remember the cab themselves on like an air shock. So they're kind of moving around a bunch and nothing's come falling down. 
I just love to see these types of home, home built hodgepodge type setups, especially with something as like, what could be as boring as being a long haul truck driver. But anyway, that's it for this month's, uh, Jay, what do you think? This was our janky edition. If you have any suggestions for what we should do for future editions, make sure you guys comment down below. I'm sure you know who you are. This came specifically from a request that was like, Jay, why don't you do janky edition? So here it is. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you follow on Twitter. If you wanna be a part of this sort of stuff, we get these photos and stuff directly from Twitter. And then don't forget to add the ultimate jank to your setup by getting a Jay's Two Cents gaming mat. Absolutely shamelessly plugging right now because we still have someone in stock and I want them gone. Thank you.